Hello everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly, and in today's video we are taking a look at another helicopter build tip. Now this is kind of a fun one. This is a new one that I recently discovered myself and I kind of feel silly for not using it over all these years. But what it's going to entail is, um, entail, which is funny because we're talking about the tail. Um, every single helicopter build that we do, there's always one kind of frustrating step. And I'm sure everybody out there is going to know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. Um, and that is getting the tail itself tightened down so that it's, it's level or 90 degrees with the main shaft of the machine, right? It's a pain in the ass. You gotta sit back here and, and, and look back and forth and back and forth until you tighten it down. Now to add more fuel to that fire is when you have a belt tension machine, it's even more difficult to try to pull and tension your belt while making sure your tail ends up being 90 degrees to the main shaft, right? It sucks, it's the hardest thing in the world to do. But I think I have a very good solution. Some people out there uh, have tried doing things like using a second person for uh, perspective, maybe a bubble level, um, or just eyeballing it. Because at the end of the day, if it's not perfect, it still flies. That I understand. Well, with Freddy Can Fly, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with creative ideas. Now, everybody out there, in most cases, to this day with Fly Barlow Systems, should have a digital pitch gauge. Um, there's really no use for a mechanical pitch gauge anymore because we're not flying fly barred helicopters. So I'm going to come over here to my very luxurious RC logger pitch gauge. Now the nice thing about this pitch gauge right here is not only does it come with all the different uh, formities for, for every different uh, aspect that you might need, but it's magnetized so I can legitimately just pop it right out of there. Boom. Guess what I have? A pitch gauge for just about anything I want. So here's what we're going to do to make sure that the tail is level and 90 degrees to the main shaft. Um, or at least I could say the main frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my pitch gauge. And I'm going to try to film this the best I can for you guys. And I'm going to zero it against my motor block. Right? I'm going to make sure that I've got zero on all cylinders. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it right here on my tail case. Fits almost perfectly square. Then what I can do is I can tension my belt by pulling out, looking at my pitch gauge to make sure that it reads zero. Once I have that, I can then lock down the assembly and if everything is correct, my tail should now be square to my main shaft. So let's give this little a crazy experiment a try. Let's see if we can use the pitch gauge for more than just doing pitch on the main rotor. Let me get everything set up guys and we will come back and let's do this together. Alrighty guys, so there's a couple very, very important steps to making sure that this um, particular informational tip works. You're gonna need a few things. Thing one, you need a machine. Um, smaller machines like 450s and, and maybe even 500s, it may be a little tricky, but I think it's still be done. Um, but you're going to need a heli, of course. You're going to need a digital pitch gauge. And of course, my pitch gauge from RC Logger, again, is magnetic, right? So boom, I can pitch gauge anything. Third thing, most important that you're going to need, a cat. Takes over all your space. Huh, Mr. Quill? So I can't sit down while I do this because this little butthead is in my way. But he helps me through all of my videos and everything else I need. Anyways, getting back to it, guys. So what we're going to do, and, and I really enjoy this because, again, I've tried many different things. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my pitch gauge on. Okay. Now, on most machines... I would say before you put on the motor, or actually if the motor was installed, you could use the top of the motor. Um, some machines nowadays have a really, really flat spot up here on the main rotor that you could use. But I like to get a little bit more down into the frame where everything's more secure. So since I do not have a motor on this machine, I'm going to use that as my pivotal point for zeroing out the pitch gauge. 
um, which of course take in mind when setting up the pitch of your main machine you should always use a very uh, a sturdy platform for getting that zero degree um, but what I'm going to do let's see if I can do this on camera here let me switch hands is I'm going to come over here put this at zero okay there we go so zeroed out on my on my main uh, I almost said bearing block on my on my motor blocks if you will but it's kind of the same thing now take in mind even with digital pitch gauges they're gonna read a plus and minus this and that but those very very small amounts they really don't matter let's see if we can get that perfect one last time here Oh, see that one was even worse. So play around with it a little bit. Make sure that you get that nice zero reading. There it is. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna be okay with that. And what I'm gonna do now, and I'm gonna have to set the camera down and aim it at the tail. But what I'm gonna do is I know that this is this is now at a at a level position. Um, I know we're talking about a pitch gauge, but it also reads, you know. As you can see on this one in particular, it's got pitch and roll. So essentially, access Y, access X, however you guys want to word that. I'm going to take this now, and I'm going to bring it down here to my tail block, and I'm going to set it right here. Now you can see from the reading on here, damn, that tail is not level with my machine, right? So, just to make that clear, let's take this, let's bring it back. Let's make sure that my gauge is working. Boom, right back to where it was. That's almost a dead zero. I mean, it's going to fluctuate a little bit. It, it's a pitch gauge. They're kind of finicky. but. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to take this pitch gauge now, and we're going to set it onto the tail hub. And on this particular machine, I mean, most, most models are identical. I mean, goblins and things like that where they have, like, the, the fiberglass booms and stuff, they can't be rotated. But on machines where the tail boom has to be rotated to achieve a level tail, this, this is where this tip comes in handy. So I'm going to loosen my bolts. I'm going to set that down there, and I'm going to rotate the tail until I get the exact same reading that I have based upon the frames or the motor block uh, or the main rotor because what we want is that tail to be level basically with the main shaft so let me get that set up let's do this together and let's make sure that everything is squared up alrighty guys so I've got the pitch gauge put on the tail block of the machine you can see right now we're reading about a negative 3.4 We've got zeros on the other side, um, which is for the roll, so the pitch in general, which is the left to right motion, which is what this reads from the blades, is off, right? On the zeroing setting that we had, it was basically zeros across the board. There, there was a couple you know, ones here and there. So what I'm going to do real quick, and I know you guys can't see me doing this, but let me loosen up my tail real fast and basically what I'm going to try to do is this is a belt driven machine too so take in mind I have to apply tension at the same time this is where this becomes handy okay so as I'm applying tension what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my boom and you should be able to see those numbers changing keep that tension on there best you can and let's try to get it to ooh, right there. Ooh, that looks good. And just try to line it up, get that zero mark. Sorry for the silence. This takes a lot of practice. But again, guys, you know, I can do this by myself instead of having somebody else help me. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for here. So we're still sitting about a negative two. So before I really lock it down, let me just give it a little bit of a twist, just a little bit. See if we can get this thing to read zero here. I 
I think that right there is about going to do it. I mean, we're still, ah, no, we're still the negative two. Hang on, let's give it a slight twist. Take in mind, every time you move the machine, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a, a slightly different reading. So just leave everything alone. Oh, that little bugger does not want to leave negative two, does it? So hang on, I'm going to loosen back up just a little bit. That's giving me a positive right there. Yeah, there it is. Oh, nope, nope, yep, yes, yes, no, yes, no, yep, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to leave the machine completely alone. You can see now that we're reading a zero to one. So, in theory, again, guys, if we're going to make this work, our tail is now reading... Get a zoom in here. A pitch, which is our left to right motion of zero. And to be fair, even even the roll setting is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a point one, but that is what it is. So let's take our pitch gauge now. I've, I've, I've slightly fastened down my bolts. Let's bring this back to the motor. I ain't gonna lie, I'm pretty damn happy with those results, so. The pitch gauge can be used for a lot more than just pitch. We can now use the pitch gauge as well for leveling out that tail. Now let's try to do a visual here. Um, I don't know if this will work on camera, but I guess we can we can try. Um, this is all going to be basically perspective, but when I look down the length of my tail, that bad boy should be right in line with the machine which it appears to be I mean everything looks really good I know on camera it can be a little hard because I may or may not be holding it completely straight but I mean the pitch gauge can't lie right I mean it's 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 essentially designed to do exactly that if this right here is flat and the reading from right here is flat that tail should be squared with the main shaft or at least the rest of the machine so that's my build tip for today, guys. Uh, your pitch gauge, your digital pitch gauge, if you will, can be used for a lot more things than just reading the pitch on the main rotor. Thanks again for watching. As always, my friends, remember, Freddy can fly, so can you.